and um, welcome to Greenbelt TV. <laughs> Going out to a live audience here as well, but welcome to everyone watching online. My name's Kester Bruin. I've been speaking at Greenbelt this year um, on a couple of different topics, one of which is to do with my new book called Other, Loving God, Self and Neighbor in a World of Fractures. Um, and really the, the, the essence of the, of the um, talks I've been giving here at Greenbelt are about our relationship to that which is other. Um, many hundreds of years ago, you know, your life might have been completely defined by familiarity, as in, you know, the familiar, that which is within your family. And um, over the course of your life, in your small village, hamlet or whatever, you may have only come across maybe 100, 200 people in your entire lifetime. Um, whereas you only need to click on Facebook this day, these days and you already can got updates from well over, you know, however many friends you've got, 300 plus little updates, you know. Um, so the world is a bit more defined by strangeness these days rather than familiarity. And it's that problem of what do we do with that strangeness, you know. How do we begin to love the other when there are so many others out there? Um, it's not just our neighbours, it's, it's um, so many other others. And, uh, you know, the fact is people are struggling with this, without a doubt. Um, it's not that the world is necessarily worse or better than it was before, but people are struggling. There's a shocking statistic I read um, in a very well-respected book, which was this, that children in the United States now are more anxious than those who were in psychiatric care in the 1950s. Okay? And there's this level of anxiety, and I wonder if that level of anxiety is connected to the kind of anxiety of how many people there are around us that we potentially could make contact with. And there are billions of them. We can vir you know, virtually make contact with absolutely anybody at all. So the question becomes, you know, how can I then love the other? And Jesus um, was asked this question, you know, um, a very modern man, I think, you know, came up to Jesus and says, come on, you know, give me the summary. What's the summary of the law? Forget all the kind of huge tomes I need to read through. What's the kind of two-line summary? And um, Jesus said to him, okay, well, you know, rather than pull from a list of the Ten Commandments, which he thought maybe he might do, you know, here's your top ten, but he didn't go for those, actually. He didn't go for the thou shalt nots. He said some stuff about love. Love God and love your neighbour as you love yourself. And it's those three loves that I've become really, really interested in because I think it's in those three areas, love for self, love for God and love for neighbour, that I think we can identify something really, really important. Because this otherness, this strangeness, and it must be that that Jesus is talking about because he goes on in Luke's Gospel to, to look at the parable of the Good Samaritan um, in terms of you know, being asked what does that mean. So it's all about that which is strange and other to us. It's easy to love what's lovely. It's more difficult to love what's strange. Um, you know, th there are othernesses within each of those things. There are othernesses within myself. There's othernesses within God and there's othernesses within our, our neighbours. And um, I think there's kind of, at all Zoom levels, that anxiety that we've, we've thought about is actually there, you know, whether it's right in the personal, with increasing levels of depression, whether it's in the very local, problems with noisy neighbours, whether it's a city-wide problem, teenage gangs or, you know, stabbings and things like that, whether it's to do with immigration, racism, rise of nationalism, right up to religious fundamentalism and global terrorism, all of these are issues of how can we better engage the other? And it's a failure to understand the other that I think is at the core of those things. So, um, you know, those three strangenesses. Um, you've only been here about two minutes, but you've already realised I am strange. You know. <laughs> there are strangenesses within myself. I can see you all nodding. Um, you know, we used to talk about ourselves as, well, we still talk about ourselves as individuals. Um, well, I am not individual. I can be divided, and I am divided. There are divisions within myself. There's my Facebook self. There's my Twitter self. There's my teacher self. There's my standing up on Greenbelt TV self. And all of these things are slightly in opposition to one another. They're not quite all the same. So how do I bring myself to recognise those strangenesses and to recognise the true self within me and to love that? Um, God is strange. Um, I definitely think God is very, very strange. And there's a separateness to God and a strangeness to God, which I think anyone who reads the Bible properly has to realise. You don't read the Bible and come away thinking, oh, God's a pretty straightforward character. Absolutely not. Um, there's, a, there's a church down the road from where I live, and they've got a poster outside at the moment, which says this, prayer better than broadband, which I fundamentally disagree with. Um, I'd go broadband any day of the week, basically. Um, basically, because God doesn't really reply. Um, not, you know, particularly often in that exact same way. But, you know, the, the, there's something which a theologian talks about as a paradox within God to do with separation and binding. That actually, 
God is bound to us and yet God is separate as well. And that we far too easily collapse the paradox of that separation and binding one way or the other. Why is that important? Because other people are separate and bound as well. We are separate from one another, okay? I am not black, I am not gay, I am not homeless. And for me just to say, hey, everyone's the same, let's all love each other, is actually to fundamentally collapse their identity into something which is not right. But nor are we just pure separateness. We're also bound to one another. And it's within that paradox of separation and binding, I think it's really, really important that we begin to discover how better we might love one another, just as Jesus commanded us to. And that means love for self and the strangenesses within the self, love for God and the strangenesses within God, and to really admit that, but also love for people out there who are strange. They are separate from us, and yet we are bound to them and have to be absolutely committed to doing that, which is, I think, what you find at Greenbelt. You come together in this temporary place for a few days and experience different people and experience a place of love and acceptance. And really, it's our job to get out there and to take that green belt moment of love and acceptance out to others too. Thank you very much.